Let's talk now about the idea of the level of measurement, more commonly simply referred to as the measurement scales. Now there are actually four different scales that we're going to be working with. The first one is the nominal scale. A nominal scale is really nothing more than a label. It's typically a word, although it can be a number. Um, it's used to categorize. So if I'm using numbers, it'd be like category 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, order has no meaning. So if I'm using category 1, 2, 3, 4, there is no natural order to it. Um, as an example, very commonly, if we're doing, um, looking at males and females, if we're going to numerically code it, code it, the most common is a 1 is a male and a 0 is a female. Now, there is, there is no order to this. More commonly, 1s and zeros are used to categorize where 1 um, means that whatever you're looking for was observed, it was present. So maybe you're looking for somebody with a specific disease. Uh, when that person had it, you'd enter a 1. If the person did not have that disease, you'd enter a 0. See, those are categories. Adding 1s and zeros here won't have any numerical value to it. Mathematics has no meaning. Well, if I just record the data as male and female, Math has no meaning there. I can't take and add up two males and three females and get something. You know, what's a male plus a female? That doesn't make any sense. Uh, so the whole idea we have behind mathematics on the actual data, adding them and subtracting them, doesn't make any sense. Now, that doesn't mean that I can't figure out the proportion of males and the proportion of females. That's, that's something different. But to actually add the data values and have any sense to them, that does not have any sense at all. A uh, common example, uh, gender, like I just talked about race. What does it mean to add or subtract races? I mean, that doesn't make any sense at all. Hair color, what do you get if you take two blondes and divide them by a brunette? You might be come up with some kind of a joke, but uh, it, what, what does it mean? It has no mathematical meaning. And there's no actual order to any of these. Eye color. If you listed everybody's eye color and randomly put them on a piece of paper and said, told somebody to put them in order, there's no natural order. Somebody may do it alphabetical, which would be interesting because alphabetical would change depending on the language you spoke. Um, somebody could go light to dark or dark to light or who knows. The point that there is no actual order to it that makes any sense. The next measurement scale is the ordinal scale. Now, ordinal scale is, again, nothing more than label, just like nominal, only this time order does actually have a meaning to it. Now, distances don't have any meaning. That tells you that the mathematics has no meaning. It's the same issue with nominal. Uh, what's a brunette minus a blonde? See, that distance doesn't make any sense. 5 minus 7, that makes sense if 5 and 7 are truly numbers. But if we're talking about grades, like an A minus a D, I don't know what A minus a D means, or A plus a D. That, that doesn't make any sense. You'd have to convert those to actual numeric values that had true numerical meaning to do anything with them to talk about distances. Um, very commonly, an uh, example here, the military ranks. Uh, private, private first class, Lance Corporal, Corporal Sergeant, Staff Sergeant, Gunnery Sergeant, and so forth. Um, though That has an actual order. There's a natural order to it. A Likert scale. If you're not familiar with the Likert scale, I'm sure you've seen it before. Take a survey and you may have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or maybe even up to 10, where 0 may be strongly disagree and 5 means strongly agree. Well, there's a natural order to this. However, if one person said they strongly agree and one person said number 3, which is typically thought of as maybe a neutral, What's a strongly agree minus a neutral? Yes, 5 minus 3 is 2. So that tells you there are two steps. You go from here, there's one, two steps, two levels to get there. But the distance between these levels doesn't make any sense. The next measurement scale is the interval scale. Here, uh, just like ordinal, order does have meaning, but this time distances have meaning. So these are actually numbers. These are actually numbers that have true numeric value. However, um, addition and subtraction makes total sense, but division, looking at the ratios, do not have meaning. Very commonly we say that the ratio is not preserved. 
Whoops, I need a P there. That means if you take the ratio of two numbers, you can divide it and get another number, but it probably won't have any meaning. As an example, temperature. Let's just say that um, it is 10 degrees outside. And you step into a building, and that building is at 20 degrees. Well, 20 minus 10 equals 10. Sure enough, there was a 10 degree increment um, in the heat. So that makes sense. So if I take 20 divided by 10, that equals 2. But what does that 2 mean? Is it now twice as hot? I don't know about you, but I'm thinking I'm freezing at 10 or 20. It doesn't really make a difference. So this ratio is not preserved. It's not twice as hot. So that's a, a classic example of something that has interval scale. I can add and subtract, and the number makes sense. But as soon as I divide, I get something that really doesn't make sense. Historical time is another example. Abraham Lincoln, as an example, was assassinated in 1865. That's the year he was assassinated. John F. Kennedy was assassinated in 1963. Well, 1963 minus 1865 is 98. That has meaning. 98 years transpired from the year that um, Abraham Lincoln was assassinated to the year that um, John F. Kennedy was assassinated. But if I take 1963 and I divide it by 1865, I get 1.0525. What does that mean? Does it mean it took 1.0525 times as long to assassinate Kennedy as it did Lincoln? No, it doesn't make any sense. See, part of this problem is this does not have a natural zero. There's no natural starting point. We're talking about historical time. I don't know where zero would be. You could argue zero off of our calendar and associate that with biblical beliefs, but that's also rather arbitrary. I don't know what zero, what the zero time would be. The best you could do is say, well, zero time was the Big Bang. Okay, now we have to assume that Big Bang was real, which most scientists believe is true. But when was the Big Bang? Uh, like almost, four, almost 14 billion years ago is the estimate. So, see, we have issues with that. The whole idea of historical time does not have a natural zero, so there's, there's an issue with trying to divide something that does not have a real zero to it. Now, a ratio scale, the numerical values that we, you will probably mostly be dealing with. Here, distances do have meaning, just like interval. Here, mathematics, addition, subtraction, and division have meaning. The ratio here is said to be preserved, and that's because it has a natural or a meaningful zero. As an example, weight. Let's just suppose that I weigh 200 pounds and you weigh 100 pounds. Well, 200 minus 100 is 100. There really is a difference of 100 pounds between our weight. If I take 200 divided by 100, I get 2. I really am twice as heavy as you are. There's twice as much of me here as there is of you. Um, time to complete a task. That's another ratio skill. So, see, that's not um, like the historical time. Because time to complete task has a natural zero. So um, we're going to take a quiz. Everybody has their pencils up. Ready, set, go. Well, the go was time zero. That's when we started. And then somebody turns theirs in, say, 10 minutes later. So 10 minutes later, I have a quiz turned in. And then 20 minutes later, 20 minutes after the start, somebody else turns in their quiz. Well, see, there's a natural zero here. So... If I take 20 divided by 10, that equals 2. It really did take this person twice as long to complete the quiz. And we can only say that because there was this natural zero, this ready, set, go. That's when we started. Distances, or anything that you're measuring the length of, um, is also ratio. Uh, if you take a table that's 10 feet long and another table that's 5 feet long, uh, 10 minus 5 is 5. One really is 5 feet longer than the other. And 10 divided by, by two, 5 is 2. So one really is twice as long. I mean, obviously, I've been picking numbers here that we can easily divide in our head. That's just to make discussion simple. But the, the same concept applies. If you have a table that is, is I'll say, 67.2741 inches and another one that's 37.9942 inches, you can still subtract them and divide them. 
and get a meaningful answer. It's not going to be an integer like I'm working with here, but who says they have to be integers? 